Of course, America does not operate in a bubble, and its foreign policies can deeply affect its economic plans and relations with trading partners. Donald Trump continues to draw fire from national security experts over many of his comments he's made during the last year, and most recently came under intense scrutiny for calling President Obama the founder of ISIS and Mrs. Clinton its co-founder. We'll talk about it with our friend Mark Ginsburg, the former U.S. ambassador to Morocco, former presidential advisor for Mideast Policy and White House liaison for the State Department, and presently the managing director at Levick Strategic Communications. The ambassador joins me from Washington. What was your opinion when you heard him say they were co-founders of ISIS, uh, Mrs. Clinton and President Obama, and then say he was sarcastic? Well, if this was a way for him to take the attention off of his allegations that Mrs. Clinton is going to destroy the Second Amendment and that Second Amenders need to do something about it, he certainly succeeded because that story disappeared the next day. Larry, you know, I've spent a lot of time in the Middle East, and I certainly have done and written a great deal about ISIS on the Huffington Post, its genesis, its originations, uh, its ups and downs, and have worked extensively in the region. Uh, say what you will about Mrs. Clinton and President Obama, but neither of them could possibly be even remotely claimed to be responsible for the uh, genesis of ISIS and its founding. I think the worst that you can say about President Obama is that he underestimated the threat that, uh, that ISIS would pose to the region and to the United States when he deemed it in 2010 to be a JV squad. Last week, Trump told the Miami Herald that he would be fine with American citizens accused of terrorism being tried by a military tribunal at Guantanamo. What's your response to that? Well, that's constitutionally unacceptable. The laws of the United States prohibit that. He gave a speech yesterday in Youngstown, Ohio, in which he laid out his policy against ISIS. And as I listened to it, he made it very clear once again that this would be his goal. But those of us who understand what is permissible and impermissible under U.S. law, the law right now does not permit a president to dictate where an American citizen is going to be tried, even if that American citizen is responsible for committing acts of terror. The Congress has spoken on that. He would have to seek a change in the law in order for Gitmo to be the venue for uh, convening military tribunals to try American citizens. What did you think of it, though, as an idea? Well, so far, I haven't seen any reason, and I'm speaking now as in my hat as an attorney, to basically believe that any of the judicial venues in the United States, particularly in New York, have somehow been either lenient or unable to impose the maximum penalty on American citizens held responsible. And frankly, let's also remember that President Obama has used extrajudicial means to take out American citizens who've been responsible for organizing and conspiring to commit terror against the United States abroad, including Anwar al-Awlaki, the so-called Yemeni cleric who was responsible from his grave of radicalizing most of the terrorists who committed acts of homegrown terrorism in the United States. Is, what about Hillary's email problems? They don't seem to go away. And they're not going to go away. And unfortunately, uh, the hacking by that has occurred, the uh, WikiLeaks having more emails to disclose, the uh, innuendo and allegations involving the interrelationship between the Clinton Global Initiative and the State Department. I mean, unfortunately, uh, I think at this point in time, she has taken such a hit on her, the trustworthy factor in the polls. And yet, at the same time, I'm sure she rues the day that she ever wanted to have that server, that separate server at the State Department. I, look, I, Larry, you know I've worked at the State Department, and I think that the people who granted that request are as much culpable as the fact that she asked for it in the first place. Do you think Russia wants Trump to be elected? Well, you know, given the fact that the FBI is investigating uh, the hacks of the Democratic uh, National Committee and that there's increasing evidence to suggest that there has been some involvement 
uh, by Russian hackers, whether they're tied to the government or not, I think we'll leave it to the FBI to decide. Suggest that they're trying to put the thing, that Mr. Putin may be trying to put his finger on the scale. But who am I to say? I don't have all the facts, Larry. This is just what you and I are reading right now. Do you think Trump will have to release his income tax returns? Look, Larry, uh, Mrs. Clinton released her tax returns. Uh, you and I can speculate as to all the reasons why he doesn't. The argument that somehow he's, being, uh, he's under audit is a justification not to release his prior tax returns. Uh, this is a man who's already been making a great deal of misrepresentations over his net worth, according to every objective uh, uh, financial uh, uh, journal out there, including Forbes. I suspect that he's afraid that he either will show that he's paid very little taxes and paid very little in charity, and he doesn't want to be embarrassed over what ultimately is quantified as his net worth, because he himself said that I determine not the numbers, I determine what my net worth is. Uh, I, I remember a year ago when Forbes came out with its top uh, list of the richest people in the, in the world, and they quantified his net worth at most at $4 billion, and he insists at $10 billion. Mark, always good talking with you. Thanks so much. Sure, Larry. Good talking to you with you. Thank you.